afternoon. I now call to order the meeting of the Legislative and Governmental Relations Committee for Thursday, December 2nd, 2021. In accordance with the mandated direction of the state superintendent, Baltimore County Public Schools and offices are closed to the public and non-essential personnel through in order to maintain the health and safety of our students and staff. In addition, with the, bottom, with the Board of Education's resolution approved at the March 10th, 2020 board meeting, in the event of a medical or health emergency related to COVID-19, the board chair, in consultation with the vice chair and the superintendent, may declare that a board meeting or a board committee meeting be held remotely in its entirety, without the physical presence of board members, subject to the establishment of a mechanism that would allow each board member the opportunity to fully participate in the meeting despite not being physically present, and that would allow the public to also remotely attend those portions of the meeting that are pursuant to the, op to the Maryland Open Meetings Act by being able to listen and or view those portions of the meeting. As a result, Today's Legislative and Governmental Relations Committee meeting is being held virtually and broadcasted through live stream on the BCPS website or on BCPS TV, Comcast Xfinity Channel 73, Verizon Fios Channel 34. In order to efficiently conduct this meeting, all voting items this afternoon will be done by a roll call vote. Board members will say their names before making and seconding a motion as applicable, as well as when requesting discussion on an agenda item. Ms. Rosenberg, please call the role to determine the presence of a quorum of the committee. Ms. Pastor. Present. Ms. Hen. Present. Mr. Thomas. Present. Ms. Rosenberg, please call the role of staff members participating in today's meeting. Mr. Baysmore. Uh, present. Mr. Corns. Okay. Please call and note the names of all staff members participating in the meeting. Request if there are any other members. Okay, at this point, I will pass it over to Ms. Pastor, our committee chair. Mr. Thomas, thank you very much. I certainly appreciate that because I don't feel well enough to have gotten through all of that. So thank you so very much for opening our meeting and for anyone who, uh, is looking in, please know that we're having our own college day celebration. So mm -hmm. you'll see Miss Hen in her sweatshirt and Mr. Thomas and I are in our caps. Um, and Mr. Baysmore said he is looking like he looked when he was in college, <laughs> chilled out and cool. Okay. And he, when he was in college, really was wearing a necktie. Come on now, please, <laughs> please. Okay. All right, but well, we're gonna let him go with that. So that being said, I'm going to now turn it back over um, to Mr. Thomas so he can do the welcome and just give our listening audience, if there's anyone out there, um, an overview of what we're going to cover today. Mr. Thomas. Thank you, Ms. Pastor. I just sprung that on him. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Pastor. A welcome to anyone who is attending this meeting live or who will be watching in at a later date. Uh, today we have a few items in our agenda. Number uh, one are these opening remarks. Number two are information items and legislative updates by Mr. Baysmore. Number three will be new business, and we will Ms. Pastor will be discussing or leading the discussion for our Board of Education legislative priorities for the 2022 school year or fiscal year. Um, and then number four will be announcements, and Ms. Pastor will be announcing when our next committee meeting will be, or I will be announcing that depends on uh, uh, our our time there. And then we will be adjourning the meeting. Um, I'm very excited for today's uh, meeting uh, as it will uh, be influencing uh, some of the things we vote on at the next Board of Education meeting. Thank you. And now I pass it over to Mr. Baysmore for our legislative updates. Thank you, Christian and fellow board members, uh, Vice Chair Julie Hen, Chair um, Cheryl Pastor. It's good to be here again. And I'm excited about this upcoming uh, legislative session, um, which starts, I uh, believe, uh, January the 12th, uh, Monday, January the 12th. 
and uh, you know I'll be spending a lot of time in Annapolis as well as uh, Miss Pastor and, uh, and I'm sure Christian and uh, and probably Julie. So um, before that, I just wanted to update you that there will be a special session that's been called uh, by the General Assembly for the and it starts this Monday, this Monday, um, the sixth. The special session has been called um, because, as you know, we're in the uh, redistricting uh, uh, phase right now, where our, our federal, state, and local elected officials are all um, working on plans to redistrict um, their legislative districts. And so, um, by statute, um, the Maryland State Legislature has to uh, uh, do their redistricting before the um, legislative session start. So they, they uh, typically uh, will call a special session and uh, the special session will deal with with just the redistricting and overriding any vetoes uh, that the governor had. Um, they certainly can do more if they chose to. However, traditionally during you know, the special special session that they have every every 10 years after the census is, is done, you have to do the redistricting. Um, they usually uh, stay focused on the uh, um, the task at hand. So we're anticipating that that special session will last about a week. Um, I will be down in Annapolis if they are if there are any other um, uh, business that they conduct. Um, certainly redistricting is important to all of us. Um, that affects um, uh, uh, board members districts as well, because I think um, some of the hybrid boards and elective boards are, are set up in conjunction with either state legislature lines or county council lines. I believe ours is, is the county council um, 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 line. So um, I'll be paying close attention to that and be reporting back to the chair and making sure we're up on any, any you know, especially education legislation that may be introduced. So I think, I think that's it, if there's any questions. Thank you, Mr. Vasemore. Um, are there any questions from the committee? Mr. Thomas? Yes, Ms. Hen, go ahead. Thank you. Hi, Mr. Bazemore. How are you doing, Julie? Good to see you. I'm doing great. Great to see you. Um, with regards to the county district lines, could you elaborate on that and what efforts um, you might see coming in a session with regards to that? For the, for the state legislative uh, session, they're going to focus on the state legislative lines and the congressional lines. Right. Baltimore County Council is in charge of us um, establishing the uh, council uh, legislative lines. Um, they're going to finish. They're going to. They should be finishing up their work because I think statutorily they have to be finished by January, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, this well, it is December. This month we should be getting the final um, uh, a verdict of that. I believe they're still still required to have one more meeting, public meeting, before they make their final decision. So we're definitely paying close attention to to the county council and that final map as well, because that that, that does affect you know our our um, um, board of education. Sure, and the, their um, public input session I think is near the end of the month, real close to the end. So okay, I misheard you then. So okay. I was understanding that there was some state involvement in that. So just I think. No. I yeah. Well, I think the only state where Ms. Hen, um, where the two of you are connecting is that because this was that was a question I asked of my legislators, um, how they drew, how will the way they are drawing their lines be impacted by what happened in the council? Because we know, um, I'll, I'll just use my district as an example, District 2. There's District 2, which does fall in 11, but 11 has areas that are not in District 2. Mm -hmm. OK, so I was asking them if what is proposed for really a new District 2 in some ways, whether they thought they were going to absorb those new areas in 11. Of course, I knew I wasn't going to really get an answer, but I thought I would throw that out there anyway. And of course, 
I didn't. And it was like, oh, no, well, we don't know yet how, but we know that they've been doing their homework and working on this. So I think um, um, what you asked, Ms. Hen, was germane and it was connected to what Mr. Baysmore was saying because there is that connection, you know, because our, our legislative districts do hold our council mandate. They hold, but our, our state legislators aren't getting involved in the council mandate oh, process. Absolutely. No, absolutely. As far as I knew, they were, okay, separate. So no, I just wanted to they make are, sure they I understand. Are, they are correct. separate. They are yeah. separate. And that, that's, a, that's a good distinction too. Um, uh, Madam Chair and Vice Chair, that's a good distinction. They are separate, separate things, and and they have to get them done because if you think about it, people that are running for the board or or, or county council or any elected of, um, on up to the federal federal level, they have to file. I think in February. I think there's mm -hmm. the deadline to file in February. So you you can't file until you know what district you live in, <laughs> and so if those lines change a little bit too much, you may you may be actually living in a different district than what you originally right because that's that's true because as they were um talking at one point about moving to catonsville area etc um which is no longer i don't believe um in their main discussion but you see that would have then meant whoever had been in that area now is in another area or if they had taken um just as an example taken where I am and put me in another, another out my development in another district that would have changed what the school board would look like, et cetera. So all of these pieces are important to us. So this is, this is a really good and important conversation. And I do hope that there are people who are listening and paying attention uh, because I was at a meeting recently, this is an aside, and the person said, well, this was um, an organization, and the person said, well, we don't have to worry about redistricting anymore. Um, that's over. And I thought I was going to go have, go into cardiac arrest and said, uh, absolutely not. Uh, none of these pieces have been solidified. And um, no, it's just beginning. It's just that all of the verbiage from everybody else is coming to a close. But now is the actual work by those bodies. So this is a great discussion. I'm and glad we had it. Yes, me as well. Also, and I had just had one follow up for Mr. Baysmore, if I may. Mm -hmm. um, yes, since this is the first time um, for redistricting since the board has had elected members and that we will be affected by the councilmanic redistricting. Do you know or were you privy to any conversations around the process and was it considered that, hey, this now affects another body other than the council? Because as far as I know, the process mirrored the process as it was done last time. Was any consideration given to the fact that this now affects another um, body, that being the the school board? Doing the seats. Right. Good. Excellent. Excellent question. Do, doing not, the, can we make sure that that's considered for next time? Right. <laughs> certainly it, doesn't seem like it was this time, but maybe I I'm ignorant of of something that actually did happen. No, no, I think you're, you're you're right on. Um, they they did discuss it. I tried to keep up with all the public meetings that they that they had and and the discourse that was going back and forth. And it was brought up a, a few times um, uh, by the public that you know when you when you draw the lines that they will affect our school board members. And so that that is on their plate. They are aware of that. Um, and I'm sure that's one of the things that they you know factor in when they. When they make their final decision, but um, um, you know, I don't know how much I, do, I wasn't privy to any inside information as far as um, where on that priority list that was. But it was brought up, and they are aware of it, so that's a good thing. And Miss Han, I'll say I attended um, a number of meetings, and in one case, uh, it was discussed in the sense that um, if 
if they're not paying attention, if they're not paying attention, certainly um, just something like this. This was my question at one. Let me just skip to that. This was my question. Right now, if I use the Woodlawn schools, Woodlawn mm -hmm. Middle, which is a feeder to Woodlawn High School, is in four. Um, Woodlawn High School is in one. Now, even though um, philosophically it shouldn't make a difference because both reps are on the board, the same board, um, the reality is that you have essentially split them and these are some of the same, they have the same children, they come from one school and go to the next. Um, and yet in terms of what we do on the board, what our issues are, and we're going to advocate for all of our children, of course, mm -hmm. but it does make a difference. And several, one of the meetings, several parents actually brought it up mm -hmm. and um, they were not real happy about it. And then at a legislative meeting that I attended, it came up again, moving from council manic to the legislative of where the um, the schools now will be and and what does that mean in terms of the board members and all that. So and and the ironic thing and so it's a, such a good question is that I had been speaking to someone who said, well it doesn't matter what the legislative looks like. It only matters what the council manic looks like, mm -hmm. except the council sits in the legislative, just like legislative sit in congressionals mm -hmm. and sometimes they peel off. So it does matter, but your, your point is very well taken. And if they didn't think about it now, um, for now, Mr. Baysmore, I think coming out of this body with what Ms. Hen just said, and I want to co-sign on that, that that is important. I don't know where any of us will be the next time this comes up, but it certainly is an important consideration. So thank you for bringing thank that. You. Thank you, Ms. Hester. And if I could add to that another consideration, if you look at, um, we do represent all students. I mean, every board member represents all students, right? And I'm, I'm really glad you made that point um, because it's absolutely true, but we can't be at all schools at once unless we're Christian and he's just everywhere because <laughs> I don't know how you do it, Christian, but you are. <laughs> and um, go to school. The, the rest of us <laughs> have not mastered time travel and, you know, we are, we are limited in, in that regard. So, if you look at the new um, proposed map, the I, I'm questioning whether there's um, the distribution of schools within the districts is equal. And I, I looked specifically at mine because, of course, I'm looking at how that change will affect um, the schools that I represent. Should I re return to the board once this this change is in place? And there's a, a drastic difference in the number of students that I would represent or the number of schools. Now there have been multiple iterations, so how that's going to shake out, you know, has yet to be seen. But I'm I'm just wondering if that is something that was considered in in looking at the maps. Again, looking at it from the lens of um, school board representation, right? And a divide and conquer type of approach. Again, we represent all students, but if we're going to um, ensure equal coverage and having members represent roughly equivalent um, student populations or school coverage, then that's something that 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 should be considered when we're drawing the lines. So I'd want to make sure that 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 concern is voiced for next time. Um, Mr. Uh, let me just, Mr. Baysmore, please, I'm, I'm hoping that you're listening to how serious we are about this so you can articulate some of these points in your work. I'm sorry, Mr. Thomas. Thank you, uh, Ms. Pastor. Uh, I would say, I can, Ms. Hen, I completely agree with that sentiment. Um, you know, if one council or if one district represents 28 schools, while another district maybe represents 
five schools, then, you know, what kind of advocacy is their board member who represents that area going to be doing for this for the students in that community as well as the, as well as the students overall? Um, and uh, I have to dovetail with Ms. Hen's comment and uh, Ms. Pastor for the passion behind this. Um, I, th I think that it's really important that we are considering the Board of Education, especially as these election dynamics are changing and you know this is the first time that we have a hybrid board um so i think there needs to be special attention in this in this period now uh as our as our this new process for board members is is so so new so thank you thank you and and constituent service is you know a responsibility that we have and that all of us take very seriously and it's you know our time is limited as all elected officials are um, board members don't have huge staffs, don't have paid staffs. We, we share Ms. Gover and she's wonderful and amazing, um, but that's beyond her capacity as well. So, you know, in looking at the resources that we have to respond to our constituents, um, again, that's another issue of coverage in that we need to take a look at um, the schools, as Mr. Thomas said, um, to be able to make sure that our um, constituents receive responsive um, service from us and that they have a um, school board member that they can go to and receive that that quality of response. Um, if they're going to um, Ms. Pasteur because she has 35 schools and, and I have two and she's getting slammed, that's not fair to her and it's not fair to them. Um, and that was one of the changes that I noticed in one iteration of the maps where I have three high schools now and had have one with the proposed maps. And that's a considerable difference in just the number of students and families served, so. That's a great point. I mean, that's, um, do you wanna con consider um, the board drafting a letter and sending it to the delegation in the council on, on exactly what you just laid out, those concerns? I think that would be appropriate. I agree. I think it, Timing wise, it um, we may. I wish we had had this conversation maybe earlier in the process, but it, it's certainly worth raising. And it, yeah. it, it, I, I agree. And and like you say, moving forward, it'll be part of the record. Mm -hmm. And so moving forward, you will have you know your, that voice. Your voice will be will be heard because they're still in the process, even though it's a little late. But um, I think it would be, yeah. I think we'd be good. I mean, Madam Chair, I mean, that's your that's decision. Yeah. I was just thinking out loud there for a minute. Um, yeah, I would um, actually what I, I think would be in keeping. I have to step off a second. Yes, yeah. sounds good. OK, yes, yeah. so it, it looks like Ms. Pastor, uh, she said yes, that that might that might be appropriate and we can work out the details maybe at another um, or uh, offline uh, how, how that will be drafted and, and send that out um, prior to. Or Mr. Basemore, when do you think it would be appropriate to send that out to the county council? Um, I think as soon as as soon as possible, because they're all making their decisions this month mm -hmm. um, in December. And. Uh, you know, but I think we could put our heads together and come up with you know, that covered, covered what you just said today. Thank you. And would we also have to reach out to the full board and have approval on this matter? Or do you think this could be something that we could do as a committee? Um, hmm, that's a great, mm. that's a great question, uh, mm. Kristen. And then would it have to be sent on behalf of Ms. Scott or, uh, or, or on behalf of the board as the board chair or maybe uh, the committee? And that might be something we'd have to work out with our <laughs> legal advice in the parliamentary right. Ms. Howard. I, I would probably say we could circulate it on behalf of the committee and try to obtain consensus since it is so time sensitive. And unless there, what we've done in the past when we've had a time sensitive issue is um, send it to the chair and then circulate it. And unless there are any objections, we could consider that to be consensus and then send it on behalf of the board. Okay. Um, okay. From either probably from Ms. Pester as chair of the committee with okay. Ms. Scott's blessing. I think that would be great. And then should our timeline maybe be before next board meeting next Tuesday? I don't, I don't know if that would be too quick of a turnaround time for the letter. 
Um, Mr. Bazemore, is that something you could get us a draft based on our conversation today and we could get you some point or talking points? OK, just e e if, if you can just email me uh, sure. just some bullets of what you want in the draft and then we'll work on that. OK, OK, and I'll, and I'll circle around with Tracy as well. And uh, OK, so that's, that's a plan. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank um, you. And Mr. Bishmar, thank you again for your legislative updates and, and, and your presentation on that matter. Um, is there anything else that we should know about the uh, special session that's coming up? Nope. Um, they should be narrowly focused, you know, on the redistricting and, and overriding the uh, governor's veto. Wait, uh, so let me interrupt for a second. Um, continue on, Mr. Bazemore. I, I will be able to get back on this call at this meeting in a couple of minutes or so. Thank you, Mr. Thomas, for taking Thank over. Thank you, Ms. Pastor. Of course. Okay. Mr. Um, Thomas, um, point of personal privilege. My screen is flashing. I don't know if it's just me um, or if it's everyone. Could we ask Mr. Corns if we're having technical difficulties with the live stream? Are you all seeing? Um, I am not seeing a flashing screen, screen with some flashing videos, or is that me? I may have to hop off and hop back on if it's just me. I, I think it is just you. Okay. And I. I I will come back on and I will rejoin in just a moment. OK, thank you. Mr. Bazemore, uh, I know that you, you finished up your legislative updates um, while we are, are, are waiting for Ms. Pastor to, to join us back. Do you think we should move on to the legislative um, priorities and, and begin a discussion on that? Or do you think uh, we should continue discussing uh, this topic further? Yeah, I think we need to wait for um, the chair for the legislative priorities. She put a, put a lot of work into that, and so I think she, she really wants to bring that forward. I absolutely did. I'll, I'll be back to do priorities in one second. Thank you. Okay. Of course. Thank you, Ms. Festor, and thank you, Mr. Basemore. Mm -hmm. um, okay, then. Uh, you had mentioned that for the special session that uh, Traditionally, they, the special session won't go over other things. They'll stay focused on the redistricting um, with the census. Um, however, is there a possibility that some other things could come up that would influence education? They, they can. They can. Um, they're not prohibited from uh, doing other business, but um, historically, when they ever have when they have a special session, because for one thing, it, it's um, very expensive to have a special session. <laughs> And uh, uh, they try to stay stay focused on whatever it is they they need to do. Um, and for what I've been told, historically they've been able to do that. But they can conduct other business if they so chose. Uh, mm -hmm. But I, I don't anticipate that happening this time. Um, I think they'll be narrowly focused. Thank you. And um, maybe while, while we're waiting again for Ms. Pastor, uh, could we, I'm kind of putting you in the spot here, but review some of the main topics for the Blueprint for Maryland and just kind of uh, review some of those main things that will influence education this next year? Yeah, well, one of, one of the main things I think that um, as, as a board and all of us, staff, everyone, um, to be, are going to be involved with is the Blueprint because if, this is implemented correctly and there's a real commitment to it uh um it can be it can move the needle um the things that 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 we prioritize that 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 the board prioritize um at every board meeting are the things that this blueprint is is actually going to um, uh, address um staff staffing pay for teachers pay for um uh, you know, personnel. Um, um, Ladders, I could jump in. Career, yeah, uh, CCR, CTE, special education, um, community schools, uh, wraparound services. Uh, preschool. Uh, preschool is a, is, is a big deal. Um, the good thing about it is that there's there's funding. As you know, we can have great ideas, but if the funding does is it doesn't uh, follow the idea, then it won't, you know, it doesn't happen. So the great thing about the blueprint is, is that all the things that we really care about, which we just named, uh, there's funding that's going to come along with it. And and with the funding, they've also set up a board, the um, Accountability and Implementation Board, 
that will oversee all of these operations uh, to make sure that things are implemented, um, you know, with fidelity. I think as that well was, as the State Department, mm -hmm. and yeah. they are going. They will have their own regulations as well, and then they're going to have to mesh. Those two groups are going to have to mesh to make sure they are not stepping over each other or going in different directions. So once they get their pieces done, then they will come together. I'm sorry to interrupt you, Ms. Basemore, but I just wanted to point that out, that it's not just the AIB, um, but the State uh, Department of Education has its own mandates. And then of course, MABE, and that's the piece um, on which I'm working, um, we will, be laying out what school boards need to know and need to be doing and what our expectation as school boards around the state and that's very germane to what we're doing and and we have a, a, a blueprint implementation coordinator dr wistad will be spearheading that and and working with staff uh, I know they'll be updating the board. Obviously, they'll be updating updating you on on everything that we're doing. So it's it's, it's a big deal. And uh, again, if it's implemented um, the way we think it will, you know, we know it will move the needle on you know, a lot of things that we really really care about. So thank you, Mr. Basemore. Big deal. Yes, thank you, Mr. Basemore, and uh, for for that uh, overview again. I know that this uh, blueprint is a constant conversation, and I'm excited to see other things that it will bring to our school system. Um, and now we can move on to our next agenda item, the legislative updates. Thank you, um, Mr. Thomas, Mr. Baysmore, and thank you, Ms. Hen, for the points that you have made. I sent out to, um, to you this work um, and know that much of what I put in um, reflects the made positions along with notes that I take from our board meetings. I'm trying to process what seems to be important to us. You also note some of it has some of the same language from last year because some of the things are recurring. I mean, we they're just issues that we maintain our authority, our local authority, um, that will never change. So there are some things that you should see every year that we do uh, this priorities list. So I'm hoping that you had an opportunity to look over it. One of the items uh, from Ms. Rowe, but which touches on Ms. Hen, and that comes from the um, Oh, I'm having a senior moment. Help me, Ms. Hen. The, you were on the committee. You represented the board. Um, adequate they, facilities. Uh, adequate, thank adequate, you. Public, oh. adequate public facilities. Yes, adequate yeah. public facilities. That's right. Thank you. Um, so we, I added that on as well. Um, thank you. Ms. Uh, Mr. Um, Thomas. You will remember at our last meeting, we agreed that we would not add yours on, and we needed to have it in writing. We would not add yours because that is something that our board has to take a look at and has to have some discussion on as to where we stand and also whether we want it to be a part of our priorities list or do we support you whether we embrace all of the tenets of the things that you um, wrote uh, or do we support you as you move forward um, in advocating so there are a lot of pieces to that so that's why you don't find that in the priorities list but we did discuss that at our last meeting and you did send me the information and um, Ms. Han I don't know what happened at your meetings, but you know that I did ask that um, this be put on the agenda. I sent it to you, Dr. Williams and Ms. Scott. Um, so is it going to be on the agenda? Let me ask that first. For the next meeting, 
I let me go and let me check, Ms. Mister. I well, it's a my senior it's, moment. Hang I on. don't, I don't want to um um put you out there. Not, I can check it later. I just haven't checked it. Um, I don't even. Yeah, I haven't checked it. But if it isn't, it, it needs. We need. We want. We need to get the priorities list out. This is the same time last as last year because we yeah. wanted to look good. Tracy needs the time, and we want it to be out by the time we have. Um, by the time they go in the session. So, if it's not on this meeting agenda for Tuesday, and we add it to the next one, okay. That would be time. Okay. Enough. Thank you. It, um, that was a question. Will that suffice? Uh, oh, I, I see. Okay, so the next one would be, be the twenty second. That Twenty second. Twenty. Okay. Twenty right? first. I apologize. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I mean, I, well, Eileen and Tracy can make excellence happen with that, and and Tracy will probably use the same watermark that she used last time is that right i see miss rosenberg nodding in affirmation so yes if we have a good copy uh miss miss gover that should be fine and then miss gover just needs to move it is that right miss rosenberg she just needs to move it put the watermark in and then that will give us even if she doesn't get it out until after the winter break they'll still get it because we always sent it. Last year we sent it digitally and then we sent um, the paper copies and the same will go for county council. Ms. Rosenberg, did if I said anything incorrectly. No, no I believe that is true. Um, can you see it on, can you see it right now? Sure can, yeah. thank you. Okay. I didn't know if you wanted to go through anything or I That's just wanted to put it up just in case. This is great, this is great. Thank you. So as you look at it, is there anything? Um, give me the category and the item and then what your suggestion is uh, if you need to change, if you want something changed. Uh, Ms. Pastor? Yes, Mr. Thomas. I would just like to comment on uh, the meeting that we would be presenting the legislative uh, priorities. Uh-huh. I know that Mr. Bazemore had said um, pre-filing deadlines for legislation um, are, are, are sooner than when the session actually occurs. And so I'm wondering if this is not added to the agenda or uh, for the December 7th meeting, would it be possible for our committee to request that it be added at the Board of Education meeting? Um, all board members have already seen this document or it's already been emailed to everyone uh, just so that uh, we could get this out as soon as possible. Um, well, I'll ask Ms. Hen that question. Absolutely. I mean, yes. OK. We can and motion and and add it and it, it's a recommendation from the committee, so we could either act on it if we have committee updates on the agenda, which I believe we do. Otherwise, it can be added as new business at the beginning of the meeting. The difference is that just requires a second. Um, and would need to be voted on. Otherwise, it could be um, a committee update and a motion without having to add it to the agenda. Well, that's what I did last year. I did it during committee mm -hmm. updates and I made the motion then. Mm -hmm. um, the difference now is Mr. Thomas's um, um, request. suggestion request. Um, because that, and, and I put in the letter, the email that I sent to the leadership that I was sure we'd get through the priorities. No one said anything last year. Um, and so it breezed through, uh, and all of the things on the priorities, as I said, parallel, well, most of the things parallel made and, um, and they are more than legislative actions. They are just to make sure that they don't change anything. Uh, it's it's more about don't up in, don't mess up what's good. Last year, we of course had built to learn and blueprint. So those were two things that we wanted. We were suggesting 
um, or saying that as a board, we wanted them to follow through on doing. Um, so I said in my email that probably I was thinking about 10 minutes mm -hmm. um, because it was going to require, it was going to require um, some discussion. Okay. So I will, I will, how about this? Will this work if I say I would like uh, to add this to the agenda? However, if I am given, if I am given the extra time to poison, because I'm going to send it out to everyone mm -hmm. during committee updates, which I probably, that won't happen. So, okay. So I'll just go ahead and make a motion. Make a motion. That sounds uh, good. So then, uh, Miss Han, I'm looking at your face. So, so what's your thing? No, I'm I'm just trying to follow your your thought process here, Miss Pester. I don't. I don't want to talk about making a motion to add it to the agenda. Yeah, because I if I, I if I try to do it during committee updates, clearly I'm gonna two minutes is not enough time, and I have to make have used part of that two minutes to make the motion to accept the priorities as they are. But the reality is Mr. Thomas's request should happen before the vote takes place. It should. And I had two requests that didn't make it on either that I think I need to send write-ups on that I would like to introduce. So we're going to need more time on the agenda to do this justice. Um, and this may not be the best. I, I know we want to get this out sooner than later, but this may not be the best meaning to do it. Um, and we don't want to rush it. Ms. We don't want to rush it. And Dr. Williams has said he wants to keep this meeting short, if at all possible, short on the short side, if at all possible, to give staff a break after the the Thanksgiving, the meeting before Thanksgiving ran long and kept everybody pretty late. So, if we could do it at the the following meeting, I think that would be his preference. And Mr. Thomas, I I know I I can I read your mind in this regard, but um, know that the legislators know that this is coming, and um, they are not blind to it. So I don't think now Mr. Baysmore might um, push give me some pushback on this, but I don't think that waiting a meeting is going to stifle this. We're going to get it out before they go into session. Is it a possibility that we could simply, instead of voting on uh, the whole legislative priorities, that we could have a discussion on uh, the, my amendment to legislative priorities, what I'd like to present at the next board meeting, and not vote on the full um, legislative priorities, just specifically address this issue? Um, simply because you you did read my mind and, and that I, I wanted to make sure our legislators would have enough time if this is adopted by the board to address this. And then if this is not adopted by the board to have time for maybe personal uh, advocacy planning um, with legislators. All right, and, and out of respect for all that Ms. Hen just said in terms of what didn't get on and what Dr. Williams' wishes are, as well as the fact that we don't want to scramble this is a two has been a well that is now a two-year conversation okay so what we don't want is it to be a scramble to the finish line um i'm gonna ask mr baysmore to uh, to express what he thinks about this whether we are killing mr thomas's suggestion by waiting or whether you concur out of your expertise with what Ms. Han and I are, are saying that two more weeks will not kill this if we have that on the agenda. What do you think? Because you're the one who does the talking and the connecting. Um, what, what date are we talking about presenting it to the, the, the board? What um, is that date again? The 20 what? The day of uh, the next meeting is the t December 7th and the meeting after that is December 21st. 21st December right. 21st, because I think and Eileen help me out here. 
Um, if you were to pre-file a bill this year, is that time, has that passed? Yes, it has. Okay, so right now you're in a good position right now. Um, you don't have to uh, rush anything right now uh, because we are past the pre-file date. And all that means is, is that um, January the 12th will be the next time that any legislator can introduce any any um, legislation on that first day. So that gives us, you know, a window that gives the board a window to kind of flesh through, you know, these add-ons and, uh, you know, have a good, good, good conversation about them and and, and uh, see if they would, you know, can be added on to, to your priority list. So, because um, I think, um, Christian, that was your main, when you uh, spoke earlier, you, you had talked about the um, um, pre-filing. Mm. Right, right. So, um, you're, you're in good you're in good standing and basically if you if two two things if you if the board decides we're going to move forward with that then what we would do um is 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 contact our education committee uh legislators and 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 find a delegate there to actually introduce that legislation that you that you want introduced only legislators can introduce legislation so we would need to uh, find someone to do that and and, and uh, which I don't anticipate that would be a problem. Um, so so that's OK. And you'll be right on time with the let you know with everything. Um, if the board decides not to um, agree to move forward and you have to do individual. Um, um, you know, advocacy, then then I can definitely, you know, let you know what committees and, and what chairs you would need to talk to as an individual to advocate. Um, so either either way it goes, you, you know we're we're in we're in a, um, a good time frame right now. Okay, and do you think that um, you know by that December twenty first meeting, up until that January twelfth uh, window, it, say that it would not be adopted by the board, that there would be enough time for that advocacy or for that uh, for the efforts with individual legislators to uh, to push for this or. Yeah. The, OK, there would be enough time. OK, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And, and to be honest with you, it's 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 like it's it's a sprint. Like once the legislation, uh, you know, once the legislature opens, you know, for that three, three to four month period, a lot of stuff gets done. And that's when everybody's attention is fully there. And that's when you can do, you know, do your, um, you, you know, your advocacy. So we haven't missed a window. So either way this goes, I think we're well positioned to, um, you know, take advantage of, you know, whatever we need to do to get these things, you know, um, get them heard. And get okay. before the right and, and get before the right people. Thank you. And Ms. Pasture, would it be possible to um, submit a recommendation from the committee about this legislation or about uh, my uh, proposal? Or would you advise against that? Um. Yeah. I, I would be advised against it only because I think this is massive. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's, it is of the ilk of a real state legislative shift for how they see, um, see uh, smobs. And I say that just have, sitting on um, Mabe's legislative. Um, it's like the battle royale. I mean, we've I've had many people from other systems asking about how we work with our SMOB, what we think, et cetera, and then others. So that has gone round and round. Um, and there are only three of us. Mm -hmm. Now that's how I feel. I think this is so important. I don't I won't be the the death knell to your suggestion, but I think that we need to spend maybe a few more minutes just having that discussion. Ms. Hen, you want to chime in on that? I agree with Ms. Pester. I think this is huge, and I think it it warrants a full board discussion. And um, I too want to give it the time that it deserves. And and not to rush it, I I just yeah, it's it's worthy of its own um, block of enough time, you know, ample time 
And and I think it's it's the right thing to do to to carve out plenty of time to have the discussion. Like like Ms. Pastor said, this is um, on everyone's minds right now. There's a lot to to talk about. I would sub almost support a, a special meeting or session or you know devoted to this specifically what what you're proposing. So that's how important it is. What I propose then to do, Mr. Thomas, um, Ms. Hen, um, if there are no objections, is what I had said. I don't, I, I'm not sure if I said it. I think I sent an email to everyone on the board. Maybe it was just when I asked for it to be on the agenda. Is that at this meeting during government or, or committee reports, I say, I sent to you on Thursday night because when we're finished, I will send the priorities if we approve what we have here, what we already have. We approve it, I'll send it tonight. If there's something that needs to be tweaked, I'll send it tomorrow. But there, everyone will get it before, by no later than Monday afternoon, all right? And I, as I stated in some email, I would include, maybe it was just to the committee, Yes, it was just to the committee. And I said, I will include Mr. Thomas's request. And I laid out what he said. And I said, of course, it would have to be, um, it might have to be tweaked, et cetera, et cetera. So what I would like to do is to send it out still this week. But at the government, at the committee reports, say, you, you got it, you have it. Mm -hmm. You've had time to look over it. You now will have another two weeks to look over it. Mm -hmm. And during that time, you have an opportunity to process your real thinking. See, that goes to the other piece of this. If you do this almost on the fly, folks haven't had an opportunity to really assess, to brainstorm, mm -hmm. to even talk under a quorum, of course, to talk to other folks, not necessarily on the board, but other people, and and just get a sense of it. This has just been something that's been out there, but we've never really tried to snatch it from the air and do anything with it. So now they will have two weeks, a little more than two weeks, they'll have two weeks and a half, if you will, to process. If it gets on the next committee, by that time, people will have very salient comments to make about it. And hopefully, Ms. Hand, that will sort of ameliorate the length of time that this will take because people will have had enough time to, to handle this. How does that sound? Um, I'm going to start with you, Mr. Thomas. How does that sound? I thank you. Uh, that that sounds that sounds good. I, I I would love for this to be discussed in the committee. I mean, in in the in the comments um, from, at the next board meeting, uh, to give remind board members of, of of the prior of the suggested priority and to encourage uh, conversations and a discussion about this at the next uh, at the twenty first board meeting uh, and a vote on that. I, I think that would give it more time. I guess in my personal world, this the time of reflecting on, on a certain issue has been uh, very long so far in, in discussing this with other students. Um, and so I didn't realize that, um, you know, it maybe isn't also uh, like what's on the mind of other board members at, at every board meeting. Uh, so I, um, I I respect what, what you said, Ms. Pastor, and I, I think that that would be very appropriate and will make our make this dec decision more worthwhile and hopefully uh, Bring some more passion um, into this topic from other board members. So thank you. Thank you, Ms. Hand. Does that work for you? That works for me, and I think we'll have um, higher engagement, um, more attention span, and get better outcomes, better discussion, richer discussion that this deserves. And and just coming back, not to steal from Christian's thunder here, but um, the two ideas that I had proposed to add to the priorities. Um, and I had sent you an email, Ms. Pester, on these. I will write up and send to both of you um, tomorrow okay. for consideration so that when these go back out um, with Christians, that they can be included as well. All right, you sent me an email when, Ms. Hen? Um, earlier this week. 
Oh, okay. All righty then. All right. Thank Mr. you. Sir. Yes. Would it be okay if I just read my uh, suggestion for the record in this committee meeting? Uh, I know that I had mentioned it at the last meeting, but I didn't read the uh, written out version. Sure, you may. Thank you. Uh, so my suggestion for legislative priorities reads, uh, title, SMOB vote status. The Board of Education of Baltimore County supports the active participation of students in board proceedings, which is demonstrated through the establishment of voting student members on boards of education, strengthening the role of the Baltimore County Board of Education student member and student members in all Maryland learning education agencies by granting them the same voting rights and privileges of an elected slash appointed member, excluding the ability to vote on the discipline and discharge of certificated employees, as outlined by paragraph 6-202A of the Maryland Education Article. Specifically, the board is seeking legislation to increase voting rights for the student member of the Baltimore County Board of Education to include one, collective bargaining, two, capital and operating budgets, and three, school closings, opening, reopenings, and boundaries. The board is also seeking to remove all executive session exclusions for the student member of the Baltimore County Board of Education, except those concerning paragraph 6-202A of the Maryland Education Article. End proposal. So those I wanted to read that um, for anyone in the public who has been listening to this committee meeting but didn't uh, know what we were discussing when I when we were mentioning uh, my suggestion. So thank you, Ms. Peshaw, for that opportunity. You're welcome and good point. Thank you. All righty. Um, anything else about the priorities then that we need to. That we need to discuss. Did they look okay to you? Anything that was questionable? I have a comment. Uh huh. I think that it was incredible, Ms. Pastor, and I want to thank you so much for the work that you put into this. I love that not only that you outlined uh, what the blueprint law is stating as a reminder to our elected officials and to us as board members. Um, in this legislative priorities list so that they can constantly be considered during legislative priorities. Um, there were two minor typos that I saw on the, okay. the sheet and I can send this to you. Give me the page. Yes, uh, they were on page. It was, oh, I'm not sure what page. Uh, one, two, page three, um, the under school facilities funding for equity and excellence. And it was the very last bullet point. Um, I, I think you forgot to mention the word four between uh, prioritized and construction, renovation, and systemic projects, but I could be incorrect. Um, and then. Front, wait a minute. Let me sure. see that. Or unless, Ms. Wait a minute. I'm looking on my page. You said you think it's on page four. Did yes. you say three? Page three, yes. Page three under. Under uh, school facilities funding and equity. Uh, and, and which bullet? The very last sub bullet of the. Right, okay. right, I just right. have a little bullet thing here that I don't want to have here as well. Um, it says. Uh, the critical needs of schools with the greatest relative deficiencies in school conditions should be locally prioritized. And then I think there should be a four there construction renovations. Oh, absolutely. Yes. yes. Thank you. And then also the removal of that extra bullet point. Um, yes. <laughs> then for local funding and maintenance. Wait, man, hold on, let me oh. change my thing to. And I believe Ms. Rosenberg is changing hers. Uh, when that she's sharing. Oh, OK, great. Uh, four. Okay, and that, yeah. All right, go ahead. Thank you. And then under local funding and maintenance of effort, you have an extra bullet point just again. This was about midnight. <laughs> I know, I know. So, <laughs> I mean, we've all made those mistakes. So, it's <laughs> okay, it's, it's so gone. And that's also the English teacher in me because I always <laughs> you shouldn't have have one whatever and not a second. But I, I also don't believe in just saying stuff just for the sake of it. So that really bugs me when I only have one. All right, go ahead. And then under special education, um, the final sub uh, bullet on that page, on page three still. Um, uh -huh. So the one at the very bottom, 
it says uh, BCPS is working to provide all students eligible for special education services with access to, to continuity of learning through distance and in-person instruction and the delivery of other services. I I wasn't I was wasn't sure if it is a distanced and in-person instruction or if it was through distance and in-person instruction uh, just because of my. I don't really I don't really know which is well, the, they call right. it distance learning. That's why I had that continuity of learning through distance. Oh no, because and in-person instruction because it's distance instruction. See the distance and in-person instruction, they go together. It's it's a compound okay. um, down there for instruction. Yeah. That's why distance? Yes. Okay. Just if you took out in-person distance instruction, not distant instruction. See what okay. I'm saying? That makes sense. Yes. Um, and those were just the the only things that I saw um on here. Everything else I thought was uh Beautifully written. I love the uh, focus on the autonomy of local school boards, um, and specifically when you mentioned how it relates to education policy and budget decisions. Um, I think that that specification there at the very top, local board of education governance, uh -huh. was very important to note. And um, lastly, I just wanted to appreciate the quote that you had at the bottom from our former UN Secretary General. Oh yeah, yeah. Thank you. I love that that quote. Thank you, Mr. Thomas. Ms. Um, Han, anything? How about the statements that I made um, at the beginning, the things that are in script? Anything? Because even though I wrote it, it's really reflecting us. Anything you want me to change? I thought it was great. I will um, give it another once over, but thank you, Ms. Pester. I I thought it looked terrific. I will go over it again and send you any feedback. Like I said, I I thought it's outstanding. Thank you. All right. Well, I'll make those changes then, and with um, your permission, then we will. Um, I think we can do this by consensus. We can move this forward, and I'll be ready to send this out to the board. I'll give you Miss Hinton um, a little time, not midnight, but maybe sometime. I'll, I'll hold up on this until Saturday. Will that be fine? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. And then I'll send it out to the board and Mr. Thomas, I'll send out your suggestion as well. So again, everyone will have a good two weeks and one day to read it. Or two days. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mr. Thomas. Thank you, Ms. Pastor. And when you do email out my suggestion, could we also um, link paragraph uh, 6-202A to uh, to that for reference um, for the board members to see um, what the current Comar uh, legislation says when they are reviewing that? Because I'm sure that some board members might be unfamiliar with the language in 6-202A. And I can forward that over to you if you would like. Yeah, please. Yes, of course. Okay. And Ms. Han, um, anything that you want um, annotated, please let me uh, give that information to me as well with yours. Will do. Thank you. Okay. All righty. So we're in agreement that um, inclusive of or barring any other changes with this that the priority priorities will be able to go out this weekend for the board to examine. You good with that? All right, Miss Han, you good? I see Mr. Thomas gave me a thumbs up. Yes, Ma'am, you're good. OK, all right. Excellent. All right, Miss. Uh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> the camera was off. Too all soon. right. Um, with all of that being said, thank you. Um, Mr. Thomas, I'm going to turn the meeting back over to you then. Thank you, Ms. Pastor, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to explore uh, board leadership as the vice chair of this board uh, with Ms. Uh, Scott's um, appointment and for allowing me to lead this meeting. Um, the next Legislative and Governmental Relations Committee meeting will be held on Thursday, January 6th, 2022 at 4 o'clock p.m. 
We are looking forward to have you join us next time at this committee meeting and want to give a huge thanks to Mr. Basemore, Ms. Rosenberg, and Mr. Corns for uh, assisting us with this meeting and for their expertise advice. And a huge thank you to Ms. Hen and Ms. Pestor as well for attending this meeting. And you know, thank you to myself as well for, for, for being here too. So, good committee, good committee as we exit with our college look. Yes. Okay. With yeah. our college look. That's right. <laughs> All right. That, our fingers are crossed for December 15th when hopefully my first college acceptance will All be right. raised. Oh. All right. Have a great night, everyone. Everyone. Yeah. Thank great you, Ms. Meeting. Rosenberg, Mr. Corns, Mr. Um, um, Baysmore. I really do not believe that when you were in college, you went to school with a <laughs> necktie on. Okay. <laughs> so you save that one for someone else. Thank you all. Good Thank night, you. everyone. Thank have a good weekend. Bye. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Thomas. <laughs> You're welcome. Great meeting.